we all need more help with who we're hiring, the quality of the people that we're hiring, and we need to get assistance on board like ASAP. All of you, my friends and coaching clients are too busy. And so we need help. So today, Vanessa, thank you for spending some time with us. And I'd look forward to hearing all about kind of what your service is. But let's start with where agents are making massive mistakes in the hires that they are making. And either that is causing problems with them today and or has caused them to not hire the next assistant, right? Which is a huge mistake. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. I'm you know, my favorite topic. Really happy to be here to talk about it. So mistakes, uh, there are there are a lot, but like, let's yep. just start really big picture first. I think the biggest mistake agents make is not understanding their role and how it changes when they hire. So as soon as you hire somebody, whether they're a part-time person or full-time, you become a manager and you grow into a leadership role. And that's a really exciting next step in your business. But what you have to understand is that the skills that got you to the point where you are so busy that you need to hire help are different from the skills that are going to take you forward from here. And so agents are very concerned about what am I going to hand off to this person? What am I going to delegate? What can they do? And that's important. But the other piece of that is, okay, so now I'm responsible for this person in my care. As Simon Sinek says, leadership is, oh gosh, how does it go? It's uh, it's about taking care of the people in your charge, not being in charge, something like that. Mm, yeah, so like understanding that. your role and that you need to work on your communication skills, the way you delegate, you are now accountable to somebody else because they're accountable to you. Mm -hmm. So understanding that you are growing into this new role and you might need to work on some skills to be really good at that is important. And it's not something that even comes into the realm of consciousness of a lot of agents when they're hiring. And so then they make a lot of other mistakes yeah. as they move forward. I also find that, that I think a lot of agents are consciously know that they are not good at leadership. And what got them successful was their ability to be the super micromanager of their clients and of the process. And so when they step into being a leader, they're like, I'm terrible at this. And so then they kind of, they either decide not to hire the assistant or they hired one and they were terrible. So they gave it up. So, so knowing that, like, what do you think that journey looks like to go from great real estate agent, solo entrepreneur to now leadership? Is there any kind of recommendations in, you know, just some basic stuff that they need to overcome? Yeah. Well, I think the first thing you mentioned, Kathleen. So I work very closely with Kathleen Metcalf as well. And she has a 90 days to thrive coaching program. I send all my clients to her. One of the reasons too. I love that program <laughs> right. is she's not just coaching. Yeah. She's not just coaching the assistant. She's also coaching the agent. And she catches things like the dump and run, like the famous, oh, good. I have a person. Here's a bunch of stuff. And then they, the agent disappears. Um, missed expectations. So there's some like really basic, like fundamental building blocks of a relationship between you and your new hire that Kathleen is really fantastic at helping to facilitate. Yeah, I, agree. I would say it's it's helpful to think about your role growing into a leader, sort of like peeling an onion. You don't just have somebody show up in your office and then just give them everything. You're not you're not ready for that. There are little bits that you take off, and as you delegate things, the way you perceive your role changes. Um, I'll use myself as an example. Um, you know, when I was a solo recruiter, I was a recruiter. I did everything, and then I hired somebody to handle this piece, and that was no longer my piece. And then I like now I don't do sales calls, right? So I'm I don't consider myself a recruiter anymore. Pieces came off bit by bit. And I think that's kind of helpful to think about how you're shedding one identity and growing into another, and it doesn't happen all at once. But there, I think a big piece of this is building trust and communication with the person you hire and allowing them to do their job. You mentioned the micromanagement, which of course is a huge complaint that we hear from candidates, like reasons they're leaving their current employer and looking for a new one. Micromanagement is right up at the top. So you have to um, accept that things might be done a little bit differently. They still need to be done to your standard, but the path that person takes to get there, it's okay if it doesn't look exactly like you do it. And you right. might even learn that other people do some things better than you. If you hire right, they certainly will, right? And so embracing this, um, you know, this sort of release of tasks that you used to consider yours and really important and trusting the person that you've hired because you've hired well and you've communicated with them and you've set clear expectations of the standards you hold. Now you can step back and then let go of that and focus on your job. Right. And I remember early in my journey um, as an employer and a leader, um, <laughs> when I was bored and I wanted to feel like I needed something to do, I would start kind of basically getting into other people's jobs, right? Like finding a problem, finding things to do. And my wonderful team finally said, Vanessa, we really appreciate you, but we need you to stay in your lane. Because when you come over here and do our job for us, and I agents do this all the time, marketing is like example number one, right? Or transaction management. They don't want to make calls. They don't want to have to go do the things they're supposed to do. And so they kind of tiptoe over to their assistance desk and start 
kind of getting yeah. involved in things that aren't their job anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's hard. It's hard to stay in your lane sometimes, but oh, like being clear about your new job description and how that is delineated from your assistance job description is really important. Yeah. You raised that really, I think that kind of that important point of, you know, the leadership, and then we now just bled into job description, yeah. which is really also about like, you, as you just said, what's their job description and what's yours. And so yeah. Let's talk a little bit about kind of this kind of concept of job description and in relationship to finding the right person. Because I do find that a lot of agents, if I said, hey, go go run an ad for, a, you know, to get an assistant and write out your job description, they'll just get paralyzed. Like they they can't, they don't, they don't have that ability to like go up 20,000 feet, look down on themselves and go, this is what this should look like. And this is how this works. So, you know, what, are, what do you see are some of the mistakes and what are some of the things that you, you that would help out for them in this process? Yeah, definitely. And and I'll go into that. And I'll also say that we have to understand that different people have different skill sets and you may have two jobs worth, two different people's worth of jobs that you need done. And we have to prioritize which ones we're taking off of your plate right now. So for example, most assistants when pressed can really fall into one of two categories. They're either transaction managers, very systems oriented, very task oriented. Um, And then we have your marketing administrator, maybe operations person. Those are different brains and different skill sets. And for for one agent who's just getting started, one person can probably handle all of that. Some of it they'll do much better than other pieces. But at some point, there's going to be so much pressure on that job that it has to be split. And so the question to think about up front is, who do I want my lead person to be? This person that I'm going to hire now, and I hope that they're going to be with me for a good amount of time. Mm-hmm. Do I think it's more important that they are a strong administrator, marketing coordinator, you know, client concierge, or is it more important that they're really good with contracts and detail because I'm high volume and I need this person to really own my transaction flow. Mm-hmm. I would say most of my clients in at least in my more, um, more upper end markets. So Los Angeles, San Francisco, those areas, they definitely just need a strong marketing administrator. That person who is good with systems, um, putting together the workflow in the office, taking care of the client, the transaction coordination piece is better just sent to a transaction coordinator. Um, And so, and I think there's a real opportunity there because if you don't need somebody who is a contracts expert, then guess what? You don't have to hire somebody with a ton of real estate experience, which opens up your talent pool. And so I would say, look at what are the areas of your business that are taking up the most of your time that you're not good at, that you don't like to do and start with that. So use a transaction coordinator, get that off your plate and then look at the rest. For some people, it's their calendar. It's their email. It's just like the administration of the business is sucking their time. And so they need a good executive assistant. For other people, they feel like they have a good handle on their email and communication and their calendar. And it's really about marketing. They want to up their game in marketing. And so that is the skill set that's most important. Yeah. When we get into marketing, marketing can mean lots of different things. So that's yeah. a whole Before we go to marketing, let's I want to yeah. touch on that for a second. One one of the things, and in this this is just what happened with us too, personally, my wife and father law here in San Diego is is we just found the best transaction coordinator in town. Don't just hire the dipshit that just says that they do it, right? Find, like there's always the best of the best in town and they are great to work with because they are like thousands of transactions in your marketplace down. They're great consultants. They give you great advice. They have already re- built in systems. So guys go find the best of the best. Don't, don't, don't. And, you know, I think we pay 500 bucks per transaction. It's well worth it all day long, every day. Okay. And so, yeah, you're right. And when it comes to kind of like, and this is where, you know, we in the Tom Ferry coaching land, we're like, Tom's been talking a lot about getting the part-time marketing assistant because, you know, we're so, we're pushing so much marketing onto the plates of our, of our coaching clients that they're just straight overwhelmed or they end up, you know, spending so much time in the marketing that they literally stop servicing clients and they stop making money because they're doing so much marketing. Right. Yeah. And, th- and so let's talk about that in a second, but I want to come back to kind of just like other core executive assistant functions, right? Because this is where it starts to get interesting because it's like, okay, if I hire you as an admin and then I want you to do some marketing, I like how you said, these are two different brains because which is super true, but I might just want to hire this first one just to kind of get, you know, take a bunch of stuff off my plate so I can go do other things. Mm -hmm. So is there any advice in the kind of hiring this kind of all in one that, that would be helpful to the agent out there? Because I find that that's probably what most people right now need to do is they just need to kind of get this all in one, help me with my admin, my business, my life, and then also help with my marketing. Can we touch on that for a hot second? Absolutely. And kind of going back to the theme of common mistakes, I would say a big common mistake is people put way too much emphasis on prior real estate experience over executive admin skill. Agreed. Because it's you can't teach somebody to be organized and detailed and think about their boss before themselves. I mean, there's this like 
there's this sixth sense really good EAs have of always kind of knowing where their boss is, what they need, making sure they're prepared, making sure they have lunch. It's this special trait that good EAs have that you can't train into somebody and not everybody has it. You can teach somebody real estate. We all got, you know, we all learned it. So I would focus on those, those core executive assistant skills, find somebody who has worked for a C-suite executive or an entrepreneur, uh, maybe even better an entrepreneur, somebody who's busy, maybe from insurance or finance, who understands the client relationship piece, understands that their boss is a salesperson and therefore doesn't think like a manager. And, um, you know, go for somebody who is really good with the details, organization and taking care of other people. Yeah. Very well said. Very well said. I couldn't agree more. I'm like, absolutely don't hire anyone who has a real estate license or has any aspirations. Don't hire the person in your office. Like they're just going to leave you. And they're, they're if they have any aspirations to be a salesperson and, and an entrepreneur, they're the wrong person. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You, yeah. You said it very well. That was great. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, let's, can we jump over to kind of um, the marketing issue? Right. Yeah. So I had a, a you know bunch of my clients. I'm like, hey, Patrick, I just hired a virtual assistant to help me with my marketing. And I'm like, OK, what are you talking about now? I know what they're talking about, but it's just like they don't really have a job description or any defined. I'm not sure that they're hiring the right skill sets and talent. Is there any kind of advice in this topic of, you know, getting someone to help you with your marketing? Yeah, good, good question. So marketing is a big topic and you there's a whole spectrum, right? So a marketing coordinator can take the 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 marketing plan that you already have and then execute it. So if you already have a marketing calendar, you have templates in place, maybe your office pr- provides certain graphic design, um, mm-hmm. you know, ex- uh, you know, services for you, they right. can take what is there and execute it. That means email blasts, posting things to social media, getting you know, flyers out, things like that. Yeah. So that's for just to clarify, basic. meaning that they're yeah. just executing the tasks and the, and the things that you have on the plan, exactly. i.e. they are not graphic designers, i.e. they're not copywriters. They're not Correct. marketing strategists. Exactly. Very important. Because exactly. when I have, Very like important. when I hear one of my clients say, oh, I'm just going to have them do my email marketing. I'm like, you're going to have them write an email that goes off to your most important clients. Are you kidding me? Like, no, like that's not, you know what I mean? It's like, but I agree with you. This kind of coordinator is really like, I've already built a really nice, you know, kind of marketing calendar. I've got all these assets. They just need to be deployed with more consistency and more with a higher frequency. And I need someone to just get it done. Yep. Would you say that, that if someone just needed that, that's all, that would be good for like a virtual assistant. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. I mean, well, the nice thing about marketing is most of these roles, unless you need somebody to meet the stager and supervise the photographer, which is rare, very few people actually need that. Um, This all can be done virtually. And, you know, we've hired some incredible marketing people out of the Philippines. So, you know, for a thousand or 1200 a month, you can have a full-time assistant who coordinates your marketing and steps in as a backup assistant to your lead EA. They can be cross-trained. And so that's a really wonderful solution for people. You can then afford to hire a marketing agency in the U.S. to provide copywriting, graphic, you know, designing your templates, building your strategy. And that's going to cost you some money. But one once they put that in place, then the maintenance of it is, is really inexpensive. Yeah, very so that's, well that's one way to look at that. Yeah, very so then well the next said. step up, yeah, the next step up for the marketing coordinator would be a marketing assistant. You might say you need to have some copywriting skills, you know, good editor skills, um, able to coordinate and describe what you want. So talking to a graphic designer, you know, there's some coordination in there, but they're up a level. Um, that's an option as you sort of bring more things in house, but you're probably still having to manage the process there. Um, and then on the, the other side of the spectrum, we have clients who have marketing directors and these are hundred K plus, you know, 150 K plus roles. They're overseeing video shoots and they're running strategy. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a whole another side. I would say on the whole spectrum, the one role you absolutely have no reason to hire in house is a graphic designer. There's no reason. If you had to pick between copywriting and design skills, pick the copywriting hands down every single day. Yes. Right. Agreed. Thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. And for the, for the agent out there, you don't know what that means. If you don't know what copywriting means, that means that they're able to write in a way that uh, creates great engagement. They're able to write in a way that creates sales and results and appointments. So like they actually would make you sound writing, whatever, significantly better and produce way better results with the thing. And that's one of my big concerns with when I hear a lot of agents say, I hired a, someone from the virtual, uh, from the Philippines, who's going to be my marketing person. And they're going to write my emails. They're going to write social media posts. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't want them writing anything on your behalf. Right. 
because that yeah, just- Yeah, and you know, I, I do know people in the Philippines who write better than a lot of Americans, but there's a lot of context and tone that even if they have perfect English, and some of them truly do, and yes. can be editors, that it doesn't mean that they get real estate and you and the vibe and the tone in your area. I mean, there's so much nuance there. I think mm-hmm. that it's worth paying the 40 or 50 bucks an hour if you're just going to have it ad hoc to you know have a copywriter in the US. So the one other piece in this marketing spectrum we haven't talked about is social media marketing, which is its own special separate thing. And I know I was watching a video of yours with a, a YouTube um, a, a YouTube guy the other day, and that is its own thing. So the person who is really good with maximizing your exposure on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook is probably not interested in being or also being your marketing coordinator. Yeah. So you so this is why just hiring an agency until you're big enough that this is a full-time job can be a really good solution or if you're on the coordinator side having them do marketing coordination and backup admin support that's doable. But when you get into these specialist roles it's worth it if you really want to maximize your social media presence you need a specialist. Like that is a specialist skill set and that costs money. That's more than a coordinator. <laughs> So, yes. you know, be aware of that, but it can be worth it. I mean, for some people, if, if that is how you're generating business, I mean, you could speak to that more than me, um, then it, it's definitely worth it, but you have to understand the distinction. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think just, you know, in terms of the budgeting too, I think just on that last point, because I love how you broke down virtual agency versus in-house and broke that down very nicely. And I think, you know, agents need to understand, um, you know, kind of where their budget is. So let's touch that for a second where, you know, kind of one of the things that I have to unravel for a lot of my coaching clients is that, is that they're actually underspending on staff. I feel like it's really crystal clear when I look at their baseline of their budget, like how much money they make. And I'm like, wow, you're just not spending enough money. So what are some of the mistakes that you see in this conversation about how much do I spend and, you know, whatnot there? Yeah. And this has gotten interesting in the last year or so, because Look, salaries are rising fast. Um, mm-hmm. We're placing transaction, just straight up transaction coordinator with a real estate license in Los Angeles. They're making well over a hundred thousand. So, you know, you kind of have to buckle up and realize that if you currently have staff, you need to re- evaluate what you're paying them and make sure that you are at market rate because if they're good, they're, they're being sourced. And, um, and just understand that you're going to probably spend more than you think you need to. Um, I share, and you tell me if this is in line with what you teach, that salaries shouldn't, co- total salary expense shouldn't be more than about 20% of your net commission income in order to maintain profitability. That's sort of the standard that we look at. Okay. Um, well, like that's a 20% of net, stretch. 20% yeah. of net. That's cool. That's, well, that's right, a good... well, gross commission. So after you pay your brokerage, right? So your yeah. net commission. So, you know, in some markets, that's hard to do. You might have to look at where else you're going to cut to, to make that work to get started, but sort of kind of get to the point where you're in that ratio, no more than 20%. But a licensed experienced real estate assistant in the big markets it can easily make over $100,000 a year now. Mm-hmm. And that's base salary plus bonuses, you know, plus health insurance. So, um, but that person, I mean, you know this, Patrick, a great assistant can help you double or triple your business in the next couple of years. I've been doing this work for about 15 years and I see it all the time. Yeah. So is it worth it to invest hundred K in somebody who's going to help you double or triple your business? I would say hands down, like where else are you going to get that kind of a return yeah. and quality of life that comes with having help. Um, but yeah. you know, marketing people in, in the major markets could easily be 70, 80, 90,000. Like I said, a marketing director, 150, um, on the very high end. And that's why if you can offshore, offshore things to the Philippines, and we, we've placed some really incredible VAs from the Philippines, um, then that's a really great way to get some control over your salary budget and then really invest in your high quality. The person who actually has to be on site and local, pour your money into that person and look at the other tasks that can be offshore that that person can then manage. Yes. And that's the best way to control your budget and stuff. Yeah, because exactly. really as the agent, you should really only be managing one person. And that person should be responsible for delegating and overseeing really anybody else on the admin side. If you end up with buyer's agents and listing agents, that's can be different for a while. Yeah. But on that point that you just said, I think this is where a lot of agents get screwed up is because when they go to hire, they don't, they don't hire, as you were saying, see the longer term vision. And inside of that, you just said someone that could, you hire someone that could be um, kind of running and operating a group of agencies and VAs and managing the transaction coordinator and doing all this other stuff. So it's like the quality of the person that you hire. I like what you said there, like invest a lot in them. And I've noticed recently, Vanessa, that I've asked a lot of my kind of, I know these are very talented, smart, bright people that are going to be explosive, but are stuck. I'm like, I want you to spend more money I want you to offer more and I want you to write a drop job description that speaks to someone that's like more of a kind of a you know seasoned executive assistant, almost like a COO or something like that. Like mm-hmm. shoot for that higher person. And everybody who's been doing that 
is getting these incredibly talented people that are like game changers for their business. So I kind of like, I think the default thought process is, okay, oh, like I'm freaking out. You know what I mean? And so when you and I say, oh, look, this person should double your business, but in their mind, they're like, but this is just going to be what I refer to as a task B-I-T-C-H. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, that is not what we're trying to hire here. You're not going to give them a list of the 40 tasks that you have on your plate today and be like, thanks, see you later. Like, that's not who we want to hire. So these are just some of the things that I've been trying to say. So could you add to that and make it more eloquent and, and sound way better than the way that I would say it? Sure. Well, I think what you described is the old model of having a secretary, the old yep. model yes. of here, here's a list of tasks, go do the tasks and come back to me and ask for more tasks. Right. That isn't, that's not how this relationship works anymore. And thank goodness, because this new dynamic is so much better for you as the business owner. Mm -hmm. What you are hiring is an administrative leader, somebody who is taking a leadership role in your business and mm -hmm. a, they're partnering with you. They're your admin partner. You know, you're the, you know, there's the, um, Oh gosh, the there's a book called Ignite. Anyways, you're the there's a different maker. models. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the idea is like, you, like you're going to set the vision, but this person is right there next to you to one to ask you the right questions to clarify your vision, which is a big one because people in that visionary role have lots of great ideas. They want to do lots of things, and they need somebody who can sort of not tame them, but kind of reality check them sometimes really get detail on what they want and then run with it and execute it for them. Yes. So when you have somebody who says, okay, I get your vision. I'm yeah. so excited about what you want to do. Just give me a few minutes so I can clarify and ask these questions. So I really understand what you want, what the objectives are. Then that person can run with it. Yes. How much better is it to say, I have this idea. This is what I want to do. And someone says, boom, 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 got it. I'll get back to you on Friday with an update versus you saying, okay, I've broken it down. Here's step one. Go do yeah. this. Let me, that was beautiful. Let me just state so I can kind of clarify in my mind, some of my coaching with my clients. Cause what I've been saying yeah. is, Hey, you need to get more clarity about the outcome that you're trying to achieve on topic X or system X. And then if you hire the right person, if you can really express that outcome clearly, they will just take it and go run with it. And then they, and then you just inspect the progress of that. And so, but I really like the way that you said it, because you said that that person would actually ask you good questions to clarify it, which takes a little bit less pressure off of my clients who are like, I'm really struggling with being able to express the vision, express the outcome clearly, but a good uh, admin leader, great term. I love that would ask you, would clarify, would get it out of you. And then they would earn the confidence that you could, once that's done, leave them alone and they'll just go to work and accomplish the result or show you an outcome by the end of the week. Right. I love the way you said that's brilliant. Okay, cool. So yeah, that, the admin leader, this is great. What else, what other mistakes are they making? We covered job descriptions, leadership mindset. We covered, you know, the admin versus TC versus marketing. Is there anything else kind of best practices here? Um, you know, and again, I will just say that one of the big mistakes that I think everybody is making right now is you're being too cheap. And being my, too cheap. my favorite book right now is this, which is, which is it's who, not how. And as you guys, and this is why, you know, Vanessa is here and Kathleen one of, is here is because they are the who to your how of finding the amazing executive or admin leader. And then also coaching and training you too for the next 90 days. So again, that's why Vanessa's here. Make sure you contact her and, and uh, set an appointment with her. But Vanessa, just, we got a couple of minutes before we wrap up. Any kind of final words on some of the mistakes that are being made with real estate agents and their admin leader hire? Yes. So let's talk about the hiring process because mm, cool. there are lots of places to mess up within that process. Yes. I feel like agents fall into one of two categories. They either hire the first shiny object that comes along or they're paralyzed by fear and indecision. And they let a really good hire go because they've fixated on some little thing that they believe is the magic bullet. And this person who meets every other requirement doesn't have it. And so we deal with clients on both ends of that spectrum. The way we solve that problem is by having a very clearly defined interview process. Um, what we've found is a great hire has to be a job fit, a culture fit, a goal fit, and talent. And so we, we've we set up a five-stage interview process nice. that at every stage, we're asking the question, are they a job fit? Logistics, skill set, are they a culture fit? Do our values align? Goal fit, do, um, do their personal, professional, and financial goals align with what I can provide? And do, you know, do their career goals align with where I want to see this position go? If we don't break this into steps and actually follow a process, it's very easy to say, oh, shiny object, you're perfect. I'm going to hire you without ever finding out that they want to go back to grad school, which means they need to leave at five o'clock on Wednesdays. And guess what? If you don't support them in going, leaving at five o'clock on Wednesdays, they're going to leave you. Yep. So 
there's like all these little places where if we don't slow down and follow a process as we hire, we get to the end and we make a hiring mistake. Yes. So I would say that's a big one. Um, that's and- a major one. And I love the way that you structure that. It's very aligned also with kind of the, you know, in Keller Williams, we have the KPA kind of process and it's very much aligned with that, which, and again, everybody who follows the process, which is pretty much the same thing you outlined is hugely successful. Their, their, uh, their hires are phenomenal. And if you, but every time someone violates them, i.e. including myself, they're always disastrous. <laughs> it's a luck of the draw. If you're not following a process, it's just a luck of the draw. Yeah. And I think there's also a lot of value in building relationship with somebody before you hire them. And if you take the time to actually follow a structured process, the candidate feels safer with you because they feel like you're taking this seriously. You're taking time to really get to know them and understand where they want to go. Because guess what? Right now, they're probably going to have to walk into their boss's office and give notice. And you want to make sure that they feel really confident and comfortable in doing that because if they're really good, that boss is probably going to throw some extra money at them. And you want them to feel so excited about coming to work for you because they feel like you're going to help them move forward in their own career path. Remember, like this is a two-way street. They're not a slave. They're You're yeah. here to support them in their growth as they are you. So building that relationship makes it a lot easier. Yeah. And there's something, in, an interesting insight that I had, which is the talented people, we've all heard this, talented, smart, great people currently have another job. And so if you're not following this relationship building process where it's actually very well structured, very well organized, and then you're making the offer at the end, you're, yeah, you're not going to get that talent person. And they would appreciate and respect that anyways, because they're probably have another job. They're not in a hurry. I think a lot of real estate agents, they think that they need to be in a hurry. They think that the, you know this process is something that speeds up. But yeah, I think the way that you said that was brilliant because they ain't going to get, it'd be awkward for them to make an offer to someone who if it was just so rushed, right? Like that actually would be awkward. That'd be weird. That'd be like, you know, me going on one date and spending 90 minutes with someone and then proposing to marry me. I think that just, that's kind of a similar stupid analogy, but that's the, that that is the reality. So do you help them with that five-step process as a part of your service? We do. And we have different levels. So we have a course that's 250 where we teach the whole process. So for the DIYer or the person who's just dipping their toe in the water, they can get every form checklist, how to, it's three hours of video. It's a great place to start. That's great. For those who want a little more, yeah, all I mean, day it's long. No-brainer, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So for those who want some help with the process, then we have a la carte services. So, uh, you know, ref- uh, we can do resume review, detailed phone interviews, detailed uh, video interviews with skill assessments and so on. And then we go all the way up to retain search, which is the like, I'm busy. I don't want to deal with this. You just do all the screening, sourcing, evaluating for me deliver me some great candidates to review and help me with my part of the process and help me make a decision. So we can be full-blown hands-on retained search or just help with parts of the process. Um, No matter what level, it's the same structured step-by-step process that we've honed over the last 15 years. That's cool. So some of the, some of my cheaper clients can do a little DIY, get more confident, and then eventually just hire you for the retained search. In the retain, retain search, one of the big questions in my mind is, you know, do you help me with structuring my offer and helping me to understand some of the nuance, like some of the technical nuances in hiring, you know, like when do I offer insurance and how does the compensation work and how does the bonus structures? And so I find a big mistake is like they offer bonuses, like agents, like, think that an admin leader, thank you for giving me that term, is motivated by money and motivated in the same way an agent is motivated. So they're like, I'll offer you bonuses. And for every transaction that we do, I'll give you more money. And it's like, that's not, uh, and please help me. Let's, let's finish with that one. But is that how that works? What, what's kind of, what's your process for helping these guys with this offer and bonus structure and money play? Yes. Great place to end. So yes, we do. So that's part of our process. No matter what level you can hire us to help you figure out exactly how to structure their offer. Uh, You will give you feedback on what's the correct number of vacation days for this level of um, talent, whether they're entry level or senior. So we go through all of that. We have an offer letter. Um, Then going to your point about money motivation, most admins, if they are wired like an admin, seek safety, security, and stability. Mm -hmm. So they need to know what they're making every month. Yes, having some kind of a bonus to share in the win is really great, but it should not be more than maybe 20% of their total compensation. So they need to have a really solid base. And then you can add cream on top for meeting goals, meeting objectives. But this low base high bonus thing is a recipe for disaster when it comes to agreed a thousand percent. Vanessa, you rock. This was fantastic. And thank you know, so guys reach out to her and, you know, Kathleen also supports the first 90 days. So explore all of their options. Take a look at the website down below. What's the website? And, and you have got a cool YouTube channel as well. What's the YouTube channel? How should they contact you? Great. Thanks. So the best site is hire-lab.com. That includes my services and Kathleen's. It's a go-to spot for hiring, training, developing. And then the YouTube channel is Pro REA Staffing. 
Yep. I have a ton of content on hiring and training, growing a team. Yeah. And it's good. I've been checking it out. That's how I found you. Thank you. Right. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Look, reach out and then we'll catch you on the next round.